The action I'm announcing today will go into effect later this summer. And by the way, just as was true for the protection of dreamers, the steps I'm taking today are overwhelmingly supported by the American people, no matter what the other team says. For the American dreamers, not the child smugglers and woman smugglers. And I will restore the sovereign borders of the United States of America. So help me God. folks, we got a lot to talk about tonight because on one hand, there's a new poll out of the state of Iowa that is absolutely devastating news for the Biden campaign. If these numbers hold up, Biden is guaranteed, and I mean guaranteed, to lose the election in November. But then on the other hand, clearly a sign of his political priorities, Biden was at the White House today announcing a new amnesty plan for illegal immigrants. And it may be kind of baffling, but we're going to explain in a multifaceted way here today how those two events are kind of connected. So let's get into that. Before we do that, as usual, be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new. But OK, let's start on the amnesty front, right? Biden today at the White House announces a quote unquote pathway to citizenship for 500,000 illegal immigrants. And he said in that statement saying that mass amnesty for illegals is quote quote, overwhelmingly supported by the American people, no matter what the other team says. Now, that is verifiably not true. We know based on recent opinion polls that opposition to illegal immigration, right, tough border policies are more popular with Americans than they have ever been in recent history. A couple weeks ago, we talked about that CBS poll that showed 62% of Americans support deporting every single illegal immigrant, right? Every single one, 62% support that. That includes Democrats. That includes independents. This is as close as you can get to a bipartisan consensus in modern American politics. And yet in a seemingly tone deaf move, this is what Biden is out here doing, saying he wants to build a pathway to citizenship for illegals. You know, while the border has been open during his entire presidency, and it's been one of the biggest points of contention in terms of voters with his president, this is what he's out here doing. Well, members of Congress and Homeland Security Secretary, I'm not sure I'm going to introduce you all the way. Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. This is not him being tone deaf. This is not him trying to give up or purposely lose the election. Rather, it is him accepting the reality and now trying to buy and import an entirely new American electorate, right? If the current American people, the current citizens of this country won't vote for me, then I'll find people who will. And he believes that that is the case with illegal immigrants. And I think most of you assumed this is where I was going with it. But relating it to that poll we talked about earlier, why is it that Joe Biden seems like he's given up on the current American electorate? Well, a new poll came out of the state of Iowa this week that shows Donald Trump winning there by 18 points. You look at the margin here. Trump has 50 percent in Iowa. Biden only has 32. And you may say, OK, but Vince, it's Iowa. Iowa's been a red state. Why is it big news that Trump is winning there? Well, it's not about the fact that he's winning. It's about the margin. Keep in mind, in 2020, Trump only won the state by about seven to eight points. Now he is up 18. Why is that big news? Because Iowa is a Midwestern state. Think about the things around the region. We're talking about Michigan. We're talking about Wisconsin, especially. Some of the polls out of the Midwest have shown it's a pretty close race, but in particular, in regards to Wisconsin, kind of Michigan, these are notoriously difficult states to get accurate polling out of. And that was exactly the take of Richard Barris, who says, correct take, Trump is not winning Iowa by 18 and losing Wisconsin. Too many overlapping demographics, too large a share of the electorate statewide. Wisconsin is a notoriously difficult state to poll. There's an argument to be made that Iowa has been more predictive. And so again, if this is true, the Biden camp is looking at this they got to be panicking at the current moment. Trump at 50 percent in Iowa is not that much of a shock. Uh, he won the state comfortably in 2016 and 2020, eight or nine points. Joe Biden at 32 percent, the incumbent president in what has been a swing state 
not that long ago. That's the eye popper, an 18 point margin because Trump is strong. He's got the bare majority, but the incumbent has less than one third support in that state, which is an astounding number. And you might say, well, this is a weird outlier. We haven't seen anything really close to that. But I would point out this is considered the gold standard poll Mm. in the state of Iowa. It's a a woman, Ann Seltzer, who runs it, and she almost nailed Trump's margin in the last two elections in Iowa. In fact, Trump barely outperformed her poll just a little bit. So if he's even in the ballpark of up 18 points in a state like Iowa, the story isn't Iowa. The story is Minnesota to the north, Mm. Wisconsin in the neighborhood. If he's got that kind of margin there and she's tracking that correctly, the Democrats have to be very worried about the upper Midwest in general. What does it have to do with amnesty? Well, keep in mind this. It's obviously about importing a brand new electorate. And by the way, that impacts a state like Wisconsin or Iowa much more than you would think. I know people think of illegal immigration and they think of border states. They think of Texas. They think of California. But think about how many of these farms employ illegal immigrant guest workers in that region of the country. This is a way bigger issue. It's way more nation wide than maybe some people put together. But also keep in mind this. Yes, amnesty is unpopular with Americans. In a way, this is tone deaf, but this is what I said. Biden's amnesty is also much bigger than trying to win this election. He is looking to the future. He is thinking about his legacy, and that's arguably a big reason he's doing it on election year. Because while it's bad enough that it's happening, okay, and let me be clear, Republicans under no circumstance should support amnesty, legally speaking at least, these people are not going to gain U.S. citizenship and be able to vote by this election. Maybe 2026, maybe 2028, but not now. But think about this. If he implements amnesty now, it will then become much harder for a future Trump administration to revoke that and deport these people. Because if they're just here, they're just here illegally, Trump can just say, okay, adios, you're out of here. But if you try to make the argument, hey, Biden said there was amnesty, there's this program now, and so you can't just kick us out, it's going to create a lot more headaches for a future Trump presidency. And that's part of the reason he's doing it. And that's number one. But even more so beyond that. It's again, not just about this election. It is also about winning future elections, assuming that they end up losing this one and the writing is on the wall there. And I said this on Twitter. I said it is dirty and obviously it is. But at the same time, I do kind of wish sometimes that Republicans thought like this, right? To think beyond their own presidential terms about securing permanent and lasting political power. And that's exactly what Biden's trying to do. And that's exactly what the Democrats constantly try to do with amnesty here is, look, they know in the short term, it is not popular with Americans. You think they don't know that open borders is not something that's currently supported by most U.S. citizens? But give it a couple of years, give them that power pathway to citizenship, and you are looking at a totally different American electorate with different values and different circumstances by which they became American, and frankly, a totally different meaning of what it even means to be an American, right? Unfortunately, instead of doing that, Republicans are usually guilty of doing the exact opposite, right? Whereas Democrats act very cunningly to secure them permanent and lasting political power that goes far beyond one election, and that's exactly what they're doing here with this amnesty plan, Republicans usually do the opposite, right? Instead of securing long-term power for themselves, they actually boomerang around and end up securing permanent power for the Democrats. And I think back to Ronald Reagan's amnesty in the 1980s, which was a big mistake. I think even today of the Republicans like Lindsey Graham, it feels like every two seconds they're going out there and saying, hey, maybe we should do some type of amnesty plan for illegal immigrants, even though that's a huge betrayal of our voter base. Why? I don't know, because we want the Democrats to win for all the future elections, right? And so that's also going to be something to think about in regards to, hey, if we do win the White House and we do have to tackle this illegal immigration problem, what exactly do we do about that? Because I say firmly and vehemently, day one of the Trump administration, we need to revoke Biden's current amnesty plan. And we also need, obviously, mass deportations of all of these illegal immigrants, Most of you would agree with me. However, if Trump does follow through on this plan to, again, revoke amnesty, mass deportations, 
I wonder whether or not people are really ready for how aggressive the backlash to that is going to be. Because you may look at the current opinion polls and say, well, most Americans, including Democrats, actually support mass deportations. It should be a pretty easy thing to execute, right? And that may be where it currently stands right now. However, when that day comes, here's what you got to consider. What are we going to do when the mainstream media gets involved? And we got a taste of this under the first Trump presidency when they did the whole child separation thing and hey he's doing these mean things to all these migrant children and all that remember that well i guarantee you if trump does institute a mass deportation program it is going to be 10 times worse than that right how are we going to react when the media is showing videos on tv 24 7 of families being rounded up these people have been here and they're leaving and it's so non-humanitarian right the moment that happens i guarantee you everyone's convictions on this issue everyone's strong Strong feelings about the illegals is going to be tested. I guarantee you, some people will change their minds. Many Republicans will go soft. I almost guarantee you that in response to the protests and the media and all that, you're going to have a lot of Republican congressmen say, oh, I don't know, guys, I think Trump is going too far. Maybe this is too extreme. But this especially is when it's going to be crucial to, in some ways, think like the Democrats are thinking right now. And I don't mean that in sort of any devious sense. I mean that when you look at what they're doing with amnesty, they know it's not popular. They are doing it anyway because they know it is going to secure them long-term political power. It's going to last way longer than the backlash of today. In our own way, applying our own ideology, that is exactly what we have to do as well. We're going to have to block out the noise, ignore all the fake sympathy, the crying, the protest, the virtue signaling, and push forward and continue anyway. Why? I said this here on Twitter. I said being called mean lasts a day. That's what they're going to do for that day, that week, that several months. They're going to be calling us mean, but the political impact of amnesty will last a century. OK, that is the alternative here. And that's why I say in some ways the way the Democrats think about this, even though it's evil, is pretty smart because they're thinking again, what long term they're saying, hey, people right now may not support amnesty, but give it 10 years. We will have permanent political power. That's why we need to do the same. We need to look at something like mass deportations and say, OK, yes, it's popular right now, but it may not be popular when we actually do it. Right. Some people are going to say, oh, wait a minute. I don't know if I really support this push through anyway. It is crucial that the Trump administration do that if we are reelected, because if not, that 500,000 that Biden just gave a pathway to citizenship to guarantee next Democrat administration, it's going to be a million and then 10 million, 20 million, 30 million. Next thing you know, Republicans and this country as a whole is doomed for several generations. Keep that in mind. The political impacts, the ramifications of amnesty will last us an entire century. And so that's why especially it is time to be strong. It is time to rally together and uh, block out all the virtue signaling that the pro-illegal immigration, pro-open borders crowd tries to do here. With that said, folks, let me know your thoughts on all of this. Why do you think Biden is doing amnesty? Do you think it could at all be connected to the fact that maybe he's thinking to himself, well, I don't know how this election's going to go, but if I can try to get this through, maybe in the future, he's thinking about his legacy here, we'll get it back, right? Trump will have a good four years, and then after that, guess what? Everyone has amnesty. Everyone has citizenship. Republicans are never going to win again. And so that way we can kind of punt this one, maybe take another one. I don't know. Again, let me know your thoughts. I think that's also why we have to be very strong in mass deportations when we come around into power. But yeah. OK, again, let me know. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And until next time, alpha moves only. God bless. Have a very great rest of your day and peace.